One of my favorite types of art to study is surrealism. And today we get to learn about not only surrealism, but one of my favorite artists, Salvador Dali. Our goal for this art lesson is not only to learn about and identify the art of Salvador Dali and surrealism, but we are also going to learn how to create our own surrealistic landscape. Let's learn a little bit about Dali's life. He was born in 1904 in Foguera, Spain. It, it was a city located close to the Pyrenees near the border of Spain and France. His father was a lawyer and a very strict disciplinarian, but his mother was more gentle and encouraging of Dali's art and creativity. Dali showed a great flair for art from a very early age, and actually both parents supported him. He was described as precocious and intelligent, but also had quite a temper, which often got him in trouble, especially with his father, who would punish him severely. This shows one of his earliest paintings that he painted when he was only 14 years old. In 1916, Dali was sent to drawing school in Figueres. He demonstrated quite a talent for sophisticated drawings, but he was also quite a bit of a daydreamer and began to dress in unusual clothing and have long hair. Talk about unusual. In 1922, he began attending the Academy of San Fernando in Madrid, and his appearance became very eccentric. He was very influenced by Cubism, and also the work of Rafael, Bronzino, Diego Velazquez. In fact, he began wearing his curly mustache the same way as Velazquez did. In the late 20s, Dali met a number of influential artists like Pablo Picasso, he also met Juan Miro and René Magritte, and they introduced him to surrealism. Dali used images from his dreams and his subconscious to improve his creativity. His most famous piece of art is called The Persistence of Memory, and he painted it in 1931. Here is another one of his paintings called Sleep that he painted in 1937. What kind of message do you think Dali is expressing about sleep in this painting? Dali wrote an autobiography and also created a theater museum dedicated to his work. He had to stop painting in 1980 due to his trembling and weakness in his hands. After a series of events, in 1989 he passed away from heart failure but he left behind paintings and drawings of great symbolism, imagination, and originality. He was an intriguing, talented artist who grabbed both the attention in life and in art. A great way to prepare yourself to make your own surrealistic landscape is to check out this awesome read aloud book called Dali and the Path of Dreams. Now, if you're wondering how on earth am I gonna come up with these crazy ideas for my own surrealism, well, we're gonna try something called autotomism. Autotomism refers to creating art without conscious thought, and we're going to try to access material in the unconscious mind. The way you do this is by getting a timer and setting it for one to two minutes. You'll also need your pencil or a sketchbook. Once you've started your timer, try closing your eyes and jotting down anything that comes to your mind. So don't try to force the ideas, just write down or draw what you see in your mind. After the timer is stopped, then check out all of the cool designs or ideas that your brain came up with. Here's a sheet that shows some of the recurring themes and images and symbols that Dali used in his surrealism. Now that we have some cool ideas for our surrealism, then we're ready to start with the first step, which is drawing our landscape. A landscape is a picture that's depicting natural scenery. So your landscape can be any type of land you want. It could be mountains, the ocean, the beach. So think of a landscape, and then we're going to get our paper and pencil and start with step one. Most landscapes will start with a simple horizon line. So you can take your pencil and you can draw lightly a horizon line near the middle or anywhere on your paper. 
The second step is to add some things in the background and foreground. So you can add mountains, clouds, sun, anything you want. After you've drawn the realistic parts of your landscape, then it's time to get creative. So you can start adding some objects and symbols from your imagination that you used in your list, or you can use some of the ones that Dolly used. After you've drawn everything with pencil, then you can either trace over your lines with a Sharpie like I did, or you can start using watercolor paint to paint the large areas of color in your landscape. The colors can be realistic or abstract. It's really up to you. After I painted most of the areas and let my watercolor paint dry, then I went back and added more details using colored pencils. You can also cut out pictures out of magazines and add those and turn it into a collage. Really with surrealism, the possibilities are endless. So I hope you enjoyed learning about surrealism and Dali, and I cannot wait to see your amazing surrealist landscapes.